favorite things about Pokemon is that there are a million different ways to build your team. There are the wingers who just play through the game and catch whatever looks cool to them, swapping out their team members all the time to suit their fancy. There are the completionists who catch and use every single thing they find, be it a legendary beast or a ladybug that's just pretending to be a real Pokemon. There are the one-man teamers who throw that tagline in the bin and only use one Pokemon the whole game. This category is exclusively made up of people doing challenge runs and dumb children. The Nuzlockers will use whatever scraps they can get their hands on because they killed all their good Pokemon already. And then there are the planners, who meticulously go through the entire decks before they even tell the obligatory old man their name and know exactly who they're going to use from the moment they begin. If you couldn't tell, I'm usually that last one. Now, I don't always choose my teams based on pure strength, but what if I did? What if I compiled a list of the statistically strongest teams for every single region? That'd be, that'd be pretty crazy, wouldn't it? Richard, hit that intro. This video was suggested by Alakazam and voted on by my patrons. If you want to have a say in the videos that I make in the future, click the link below to visit my Patreon. So what constitutes a perfect team? It's a simple question that unfortunately has a not so simple answer, for it entirely depends on your definition of perfect. People have combed through every battle to find the best starter and built a team around them. People have found the highest possible base stat total across six Pokemon. Speedrunners found that you could stomp the whole game with a single tentacruel in record time. So before we begin our search for the perfect team for any region, let alone every region, we first need to go through the rigorous scientific process of defining what a perfect team even is. According to Alakazam, who paid me $15 to suggest this video idea, a perfect team would be one that has no overall weaknesses, so at least one immunity or resistance to every type, and has some source of stab super effective damage against every major trainer in the game. So we're going with that. Even with that definition, building the strongest team for all nine regions in the game is gonna take a long time. But I am a man of the people, and if Alakazam decrees that I must, then it will be so. The strategy here is to go through each game, building the team as I go, making sure that it has at least one source of stab super effective damage for every gym before that gym, bearing in mind that the final team must have at least one resistance to every type in the game by the end. In any case where there are multiple valid options for team members to fulfill these two criteria, I will default to the one with the higher base stat total. By the end of this crazy logic puzzle process, we should have the strongest possible team for every single region. Also, while you're only allowed to have six Pokemon on your team at any given time, the game totally allows and sometimes even encourages you to swap Pokemon around as you go. So you could totally catch something to help you with an early gym that you will box in favor of something stronger later on. If you're a stone cold bastard, you think I'm the type of guy to kick my Mankey to the curb after using it to beat Brock, cast my brother-in-arms aside like a piece of garbage floating in the wind? No. Once a Pokemon joins my team, it's there for good. Unless it's only there for HMs, then by all means chuck it. But speaking of HMs, if we're doing this for every single game, then HMs are something that we're going to have to keep in mind. Most of the super special hidden moves 
are total trash and barely come up, even in the older games. So I can totally get you catching a Bidoof and loading it up with the stuff and then throwing it in the box, but there are two HMs that you generally want to have on you at all times because they're pretty essential for traversal and they're the only two that don't suck. Those being Surf and Fly. So for any of the earlier games where you need HMs, I'll make sure that you have a member on the team who can learn both of these. So to recap, a team needs to have something super effective against every major battle, the final team can't have any uncovered weaknesses, no substitutions, and the earlier games need to have access to fly and surf. Got all that? Great. Then it's time to begin with the Kanto region. Traditionally, Bulbasaur is considered the most optimal choice of starters for Kanto because it's the only one that's strong against both Brock and Misty, the first two gym leaders, and it resists Lieutenant Surge and Erica, so it can basically carry you single-handedly through the first half of the game, by which point you've probably caught some other Pokemon that can take you the rest of the way. However, when building a team with no weaknesses, I'll be honest, Grass sucks pretty bad, and it turns out that Squirtle is actually the better choice from a holistic team perspective. Squirtle can handle Brock for you, no problemo. For Misty, you can catch a Pikachu in Viridian Forest. For Lieutenant Surge, catch a Geodude in Mount Moon, and a Doduo on Route 17 for Erica, since Dodrio has the best stat spread for all the flying type Pokemon available at this point in the game considering Crobat isn't available until the post-game, if it even exists in that gen at all. For Koga, you need to catch a Poliwhirl by fishing with a good rod basically anywhere and trading it with this old dude in Cerulean City for a Jinx. And lastly, since Dark didn't exist in Gen 1 or really any of the Kanto remakes before post-game, if you want something super effective against Sabrina, then Ghastly is basically your only good option. That rounds out the sixth team member, so fully evolved, your team looks like this. Not too shabby. Blastoise can take out Blaine and Giovanni pretty easily, Raichu and Golem can handle Lorelei's water and ice types, Dodrio takes out Bruno's fighting types, Jinx mops the floor with Agatha's poison team, don't let her fool you, she only has three ghost types, and they're actually all the same ghost type. Jinx and Raichu can take down Lance, and you've got something super effective against all of your rival's team as the champion. And as promised, if we check the Team Builder tool from Maryland, we can see that it has at least one resistance to every single type in the game, with the exception of Dragon, which is only resisted by Steel, which doesn't exist in Gen 1. All in all, the only hole in this team, if you will, is that it doesn't have stab super effective damage against normal types. But let's be honest, Normal types are trash, and you've got a Gengar, so I don't know why you're worried. They literally can't even touch ya. If you really want that coverage, you could swap Blastoise for Polyrath, you know, if you don't mind staring your best friend in the world dead in the eyes and telling him that he'll never be good enough, and that you'd rather stuff him in the dark corner of a box for the rest of eternity than spend any more time with him, you know. It's entirely up to you. And there you have it. A perfect six-member team for the Kanto games. You've got an answer to every major trainer in the game. You resist everything that you can resist. You've got all your HMs covered. Overall, you can pretty much handle whatever the game throws at you. See? That wasn't too bad. Now we only have... Oh, eight, uh, eight more to go. All right, Johto time. For your starter, you're gonna want Feraligator. Honestly, none of the starters are that helpful offensively against any of the gyms, and water is the best of the three typings defensively. Catch a Geodude for Faulkner, a Zubat for Bugsy, Geodude slash Graveler can handle Whitney without super effective damage, no problem, and there's no fighting type that wouldn't totally screw up the team defensively later on. Get the Eevee from Bill and evolve it into an Umbreon for Morty, Crobat beats Chuck, Golem beats Jasmine, catch a Magnemite for Price, and a Mammal Swine for Claire. This team of six, when fully evolved, has at least one resistance to every single type in the game, and it has a stab super effective option for every other major trainer because, well, it has perfect stab type coverage except for Dark. 
You've got no stab, fighting, or bug moves, which means that the one dark type trainer in the game has exactly one pure dark type that you can't hit super effectively, but you can still resist it with Magnezone. And again, you have nothing super effective on normal, which again, is a trash type. Just throw Brick Brick on someone and you'll be fine. I don't know why you keep bringing this up to me in this script here that I, that I wrote for you. Oh... All right, that's Johto done and dusted. Now we're cooking. Though, I do have to say, before moving on, is it just me, or are these two teams a little, a little similar to one another? I mean, they both have a water starter. They've got a lot of the same typings across them. Heck, they both have a golem. I guess in a way it makes sense. I mean, both teams needed to have a flying type for the HM, and since flying and fire have a lot of the same type coverage, then choosing a fire type starter would have been a little redundant. Water and grass also cover a lot of the same ground. Get it? Get it? Get it? And we needed a water type for surf, so there was really no need for any grass type. Electric was the better option for water coverage. Flying and water are both weak to electric, so a ground type was pretty necessary. Dragon is only weak to ice and itself in the early gen, so ice was pretty essential, as was a ghost or dark type for psychic trainers. Steel has so many resistances that it helped round out the Johto team, and had it been available in gen one, it would have accounted for that team's weaknesses as well. So having those seven types was sort of a given, I guess, and it just so happens that those by themselves themselves have nearly perfect stab coverage and cover each other's weaknesses perfectly. If there was room for a fighting type for that normal and dark coverage, you'd be good to go. Huh. Oh, it's almost it's almost like if you just built a team where all of these types were represented and you just made sure that you got them before you needed them for a gym or something, then you could have a perfect team for any region. But 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 no 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 I, I'm getting ahead of myself. I mean it's only happened two consecutive generations, both of which featured Kanto. It's hardly enough to suggest some sort of master pattern. I mean, I mean, it's not like the perfect team for Hoenn would have been Swappert, Swellow, Shiftery, Medicham, Magnezone, and Glalie. <gasps> it would seem that I owe you an apology, Alakazam, my friend. For you see, I have not accomplished the goal that you set out for me. I have not found the best team for every region. I found the best team for any region. Just make sure you have a water, flying, ground, ghost or dark, ice, electric, steel, and fighting if you can manage it, though it's not needed, all represented somehow. Make sure that you get them early enough to help you with each gym, and you win! Simple as that! Don't believe me? Watch. Diamond and Pearl, you've got Empoleon, Staraptor, Luxray, Gengar, Garchomp, Abomasnow. Black and White, Samurott, Unpheasant, Excadrill, Vanillix, Galvantula, Chandelorp. Black and White 2, easy. Samurott, Lucario, Crobat, Crocodile, Vanillix, Galvantula. <laughs> Yes, yes, I've cracked the code. I can see everything so clearly now. It all makes sense. Do you still doubt me? Do you still doubt my power? Kalos, Greninja, Talonflame, Aurorus, Lucario, Jolteon, Golem. Alola, you don't even need HMs anymore, so you could ditch the water and flying types, but the formula is so perfect, why on God's green earth would you do that when you could have Primarina, Crabominable, Braviary, Magnezone, Alolan, Marowak, and Garchomp? <laughs> You think Pokemon is all a game? You think Pokemon is about making choices? In science, there are only two choices. The right one and the wrong one. Galar, Inteleon, Corviknight, Galvantula, Mamoswine, Beware, Cursula, Paldea, Quaxley, Kilowattrell, Goldingo, Grimmsnarl, Garchomp, and Baxcalibur. Alakazam, you ask for the strongest team for every region? Well, I have delivered to you the strongest team for every region. And the strongest team for every region that will ever and can ever be made. Ironically, none of which contain Alakazam.
I have derived a formula that will bring you success in every single endeavor. Let Thanos search for his Infinity Stone, let Voldemort guard his Horcruxes, and Sauron forge his ring, for I have no need of any of them. With these seven types, maybe eight if you can swing it, I can build the perfect team. With these seven, again, maybe eight pieces, I can rule the world. <laughs> Again, I want to stress, fighting isn't necessary. I mean, it might be helpful, but normal types are trash, so I don't really think you have to worry. A huge thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon, including Alakazam, Ethan Furlano, and Sherry and Mark. If I had to build the perfect team of people, you'd be on it.